Hello, my name is Claire Santiles. I'm a senior at Hutchison School in Memphis, Tennessee. I've always been interested in medicine, and this summer I wanted to learn more about different healthcare systems and surgical practices. So I traveled to Shrewsbury, England, and New Orleans to experience these healthcare systems firsthand. First, I spent a week in England interning with orthopedic surgeon Pete Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher specializes in knee surgeries at the Robert Jones and Agnes Hunt Orthopedic Hospital in Oswestry, England. I spent my week in England watching Mr. Gallagher perform a variety of knee surgeries, from arthroscopies to ACL repairs and both half and full knee replacements. Here's Mr. Gallagher. Hi, my name is Pete Gallagher and I'm a consult consultant orthopedic surgeon with a special interest in knee surgery and sports injuries. I work at the Robert Jones and Agnes Hunt Orthopedic Hospital in Oswestry in England. I got to see a lot of the different types of surgeries and aspects of Mr. Gallagher's job, and I even got to interview him. First, I asked him about the healthcare system in England, which greatly differs from our American healthcare system. What sets the UK's healthcare system apart from the American private healthcare system? So, I work in the UK healthcare system, which is majority NHS, a national health service, which is funded by the state through tax contributions. And this is a service that's free at the point of entry where all patients are eligible for care and um, for most conditions. There's also a private sector which runs parallel to this where patients can pay for health insurance or self-fund for surgery or for other medical treatments. But that's obviously more expensive. What are some of the pros and cons of the National Health Service healthcare system? All patients have an equal access to the services. However, because healthcare is very expensive, there are certain checks and measures and there's an element of control to what patients are allowed to um, have in terms of treatment. There are requirements that could be seen as rationing, but certainly there are certain stipulations that have to be fulfilled before patients are eligible for certain treatments. And the more expensive treatments and the more expensive surgeries are more difficult for patients to secure funding for um, because this would um, obviously have a huge burden on the country if everyone had very, very expensive treatments. However, that being one of the downsides to the service, the upside is very much that everyone has treatment which is appropriate to their needs and everyone has access to that treatment. No one's left without health care or health care cover. However, because of that, there are delays in terms of the treatment, in terms of the timing that the treatment can be delivered. All patients in England have to have their NHS treatment from secondary care, so physicians or surgery, performed within 18 weeks of their referral from their family doctor. Do you think the healthcare system affects patient privacy? One of the main differences that you'll find between the private sector and the, the public sector and the NHS in the UK, and probably between the NHS system in general in the UK and private healthcare systems on the continent or in the United States, is that the majority of patients who are cared for on the National Health Service will be looked after whilst in patients following surgery on general wards where they may be in a bay of four or six patients who have had similar surgery performed. These bays are single sex, so patients are not mixed in terms of um, male and female, and they have direct access to single sex um, toilet and washing facilities, but they are in a curtained off bay with the other individuals and so there's a, a slight less element of privacy than there would be if there was a single room. Although this does allow patients to see how that they are rehabilitating in comparison to people who've had similar surgery and to develop a camaraderie and to G each other along with regards to the rehabilitation. Mr. Gallagher operates in different rooms depending on the type of surgery he's performing. Open surgeries require a more sterile environment while less major surgeries, such as keyhole operations and arthroscopies, can be performed in different operating theatres because the risk of infection is not as high. How is the setup of the operating theatre unique in England? One of the main differences in terms of the theatre design between the two countries is that we will often have an anaesthetic room where the anaesthetist will put the patient to sleep, intubate them, secure the airway, and attach any drips and monitoring equipment that is necessary prior to the surgery. Whilst the operating theatre is a separate room where the scrub staff are setting up the equipment that is necessary for the operation, there's then a transfer between 
the anaesthetic room and the operating room, which takes between 15 and 30 seconds, where the patient is removed from one set of ventilation equipment and transferred onto another. That practice is very common throughout the UK and is very low risk. However, in the United States, it's very, very uncommon, and normally patients would be anaesthetised in the operating theatre without disconnecting or transferring them once they had had their airway secured. Do the instruments and tools used in English hospitals differ from those used in the United States or other countries? With regards to the actual instruments and the tools that we use for surgery, there is very, very little difference. The major medical companies operate across the USA, Europe and the UK and into Asia and the equipment that's used is uniform and to the same standards wherever that um, work is done. So there are some procedures which are available only on, in the UK or in Europe which may not be available in the States and conversely some very specialist implants and cutting edge technology which is very expensive may not be available on the whole in the NHS hospitals however it is normally available in specialist institutions such as the one that I work in. After I went to England, I drove to New Orleans, Louisiana, my hometown, to enter with plastic surgeon Scott Sullivan and his wife, Michelle Cooper. Dr. Sullivan does reconstructive surgeries for patients with breast cancer at the Center for Restorative Breast Surgery. He owns and runs his own hospital, St. Charles Surgical Clinic, with an approach that incorporates modern technology and surgical techniques with extremely specialized patient care. So I'm Scott Sullivan, plastic surgeon in New Orleans. Welcome to New Orleans. In the U.S., we have a private healthcare system, and each hospital has its own stipulations regarding the types of insurance it will accept. To what extent does insurance cover your patients? What I do, breast reconstruction for breast cancer, is covered by all the health insurance carriers, all the private insurance policies as well as Medicare and Medicaid. In 1998 there was legislation passed, federal legislation, that uh, required coverage of re breast reconstruction after mastectomy. So all of my patients um, will have their insurance cover these procedures. The U.S. recently adopted the Affordable Care Act, better known as Obamacare, to cover a greater percentage of the population with free health care. Although this new form of health care is nowhere near as socialized as the British NHS system, it has the same goal of providing free health care. Many Americans feel strongly for or against the Affordable Care Act, so I asked Dr. Sullivan his opinion. Can you briefly elaborate on the Affordable Care Act? In regards to health insurance nationally, uh, the, we just had the Affordable Health Care Act passed. Some are happy about it, some dissatisfied. It, has not covered as many lives as they anticipated. And in my opinion, there, were, there wasn't, there never were the stories of little Johnny who couldn't get chemotherapy for, to treating his leukemia. There was always availability of medical care for people even without insurance. And those that, for instance, that we saw that didn't have insurance required something other than breast reconstruction. They would pay a nominal fee or we'd do it all for free. How do you work with patients who have just been diagnosed with cancer? When patients are diagnosed <clears throat> with breast cancer, now we try to get them into the system in a comprehensive coordinated effort to treat them. So first it's the diagnosis of it that's done by the general surgeon or radiologist. Then they're referred uh, either to a breast surgeon or the general surgeon will handle the problem of treating the cancer by removing part of the breast or all of the breast and also be coordinated with us, the reconstructive surgeons, so at the same time we can reconstruct the patient if that's part of their treatment plan. They'll also be keyed into an oncologist who will see them before they have the surgery and after, after the initial diagnosis and, and after the mastectomy is done to help plan their chemotherapy care. So it's comprehensive treatment, it's very accessible. Patients who are newly diagnosed can get streamlined in. In our specific practice, someone who's newly diagnosed kind of jumps to the front of the line. What makes your hospital unique in regards to the patient care? What we created here at the Center for Sort of Breast Surgery in St. Charles Surgical Hospital was uh, what we tried to do with a unique model, something that is uncommonly found these days in particular, and that was to try more 
to provide more personalized care to the patients. Uh, we found as we got into medicine that it was becoming less and less personalized because of the pressures of the medical care provider to see more and more patients just because medical reimbursement for the services were going down. Uh, we want it to be accessible to them. We wanted them to have the, the finest of care and protected and secure environment. We were quite happy with how the larger hospitals were forcing patients out before they're ready to go out. Uh, we're happy with the uh, quality of the rooms or the cleanliness of the places and so we wanted to control all that to provide a better care and that's what we have here. The St. Charles Surgical Hospital is very advanced in regards to its surgical procedures and is constantly looking to improve the quality of care and operations. What developments do you foresee in your field in the future? So we look forward to the future and potential advances in my field. Uh, we get pretty excited about some things that are can be really wild uh, and almost Steven Spielberg-like. For instance, growing a your own breast in a petri dish, fabricating it just like they're doing now. They're able to take some cells and create an ear to a petri dish. On the nearer front, um, we're evolving in our ability to operate and use smaller and smaller blood vessels. Uh, so we're, we're able to comfortably connect a half or a third of a millimeter in diameter blood vessel. And of course, we need a nice microscope to do it with. But as we become more comfortable with microsurgically transferring this tissue, we're more comfortable with relying on smaller and smaller blood vessels to reliably transfer and revascularize the tissue. Another evolving front is also with uh, soft tissue management is where we can where we can suction fat out, collect it sterilely and centrifuge it, and, um, and inject it into an area to help add volume. I spent my third day in New Orleans with Dr. Michelle Cooper. She is also a plastic surgeon, but she specializes in aesthetic rather than reconstructive surgery. Her operations are not covered by any form of insurance. Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Cooper. I'm a plastic surgeon in private practice in Mandeville, Louisiana. My specialty is cosmetic surgery. What are the benefits of not accepting health insurance? So one of the things that's enjoyable about my job is that I have ample time to spend with each patient because I um, do not participate in any um, insurance plans. For this reason, the amount of time that I plan to spend with the patients, I can charge appropriately for um, to cover all of my overhead costs. So there's no external pressure to get out of um, the consultation any faster than is necessary. Um, I think this allows me to have a better relationship with my uh, patients and it allows me to be a more thorough uh, physician and ultimately provide um, surgical results that the patient um, uh, wished for. How do you enforce patient privacy? Cosmetic surgery is a personal choice and patients are often concerned about um, others finding out about their choice to have cosmetic surgery. For this reason, um, it's important to maintain patient privacy. In terms of hospitalization and wards versus private rooms, um, when I was in residency training, some of the older hospitals did have uh, wards where the uh, patients were all kept in one room with uh, curtains separating them, which um, does minimize the amount of privacy that a patient has because conversations can be heard through the curtain. Um, whereas rooms, separate rooms, um, allow for the patients to have complete privacy. Do the instruments and tools that you use differ from those used in the United Kingdom or other countries? The instruments and the procedures that are used in cosmetic surgery are used internationally and part of this is because of the collaboration between the different societies. Uh, ultimately, however, because our FDA is so um, stringent on uh, uh, passing um, new uh, drugs into the system, and it does take more time 
uh, for the physicians to have the accessibility um, to products here in the U.S. that some uh, other countries may have, um, but ultimately their safety is often proven by the time uh, they get to us. The main differences that I noticed stem from the two different healthcare systems. The waiting times differed remarkably between the two countries. Patients in the UK may be placed on a waiting list for up to 18 months before receiving any form of consultation. On the other hand, patients in the US can receive care in up to two weeks, depending on their arrangements with the surgeons. In both the UK and the US, patients can choose which doctors they want, but in general, doctors are much more available in the US. The operating rooms, or as the English call it, the operating theaters, differ slightly in the ways they are set up. In the UK, patients receive anesthesia in a separate room prior to injury, entering the operating theater. This practice is almost unheard of in the US. In New Orleans, I could really see what the patients were paying for in regards to their environment and surroundings. For example, the hospital in New Orleans has a private chef that cooks gourmet meals for the patients in recovery. And patients also have their own large hotel-like bedrooms. Although not all American hospitals have these amenities, in general, most American hospitals has, have a substantially larger quality of surroundings than hospitals under the NHS. Surgeons in the U.S. have more flexibility with the time spent with patients because they don't have the pressure of public waiting lists. I also noticed that doctors speak to patients in more private settings. In the U.K., I was allowed to observe each of Mr. Gallagher's consultations as long as the patient had no objection. Some of these consultations were done on the wards with, within very close earshot of patients in nearby beds. Like Mr. Gallagher described, patients in the UK are placed in wards side by side other patients. These sleeping arrangements substantially differ from the private rooms used in most American hospitals. Despite all of these differences, the care that the patients are receiving does not really differ on either side of the Atlantic. Both countries use similar instruments and procedures to perform certain operations, and the same standards of cleanliness are required across both countries. The NHS allows residents of the UK to get necessary medical treatment, but will not cover the cost of elective cosmetic procedures. On the other hand, patients in the US must cover the cost of their own medical treatments. There are definitely advantages and disadvantages to both medical systems, and I was fortunate enough to be able to experience both systems firsthand. I would like to thank my mentors, Pete Gallagher, Scott Sullivan, and Michelle Cooper, and their families for hosting me and for providing this once-in-a-lifetime experience. Thank you. This show is brought to you by Starbucks. <laughs> Live life well. <laughs> <laughs>